In today's video, we're gonna react to some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Well, I hope nobody got hurt out there because it looked like some people got left behind and a lot of people left a lot of kids behind on that one. Hopefully this is the worst of Yellowstone's eruptions because it's only a matter of time before the supermassive volcano wakes up. I noticed the date down there says 2022, so this is a couple of years old. And I can't guarantee that that's actual space footage launched by this person, because that definitely sounds like water. I would really like to know, how do people send these up into the sky and get it back? Because I would be afraid if I sent something up into the sky that it would land on somebody or somebody's property and actually damage something. So I have a 15 hertz frequency running through this massive 24 inch coil, and I'm running multiple amplifiers, which are putting out close to 1500 watts of pure power uh, to emit a magnetic toroidal field that will interact with the neodymium magnet that's inside of this paper. So as I get this closer to the center of the, where the toroidal field is, you can see the magnet reacting violently to the, um, to the frequency that's being emitted. So this is a very, very powerful, beautiful piece. I call these healing works of art. Um, so if you have any questions about frequencies or frequency devices, um, you can contact Steve. You can visit the website, FrequenzyWave.com, um, or you can DM me if you have any questions. I honestly am kind of terrified of those. That just looks extremely terrifying. And I would, I'm really surprised that the camera does not mess up when it's around this device as well. I would be worried with people that have like a pacemaker or some kind of device in their body that would malfunction being around this. But it does look really cool. We might have found it. I've been wanting to do this one for so long and we're finally doing it. The Lost City of Atlantis. Maybe it's not just a myth. It's time. Everyone knows the story. Advanced civilization existed long ago. They got lost under the sea. And there is a location in the Western Sahara Desert of Mauritania known as the Eye of the Sahara or the Rishat Structure. Yeah, this one's been beaten to death by all the Atlantis hunters, but it does have striking similarities to Plato's definition of the lost city over 2,000 years ago. Concentric circles, three of water, two of land, opening to the sea in the south and mountains to the north. White, black, and red stones and an abundance of gold, all of which are prominent features of the Mauritania region. Not to mention it was even recorded on this ancient map by Roman geographer Pomponius Mila around 43 AD as Atlante in the same geographical region as the Rishat structure. You ever get tired of me saying it must be a coincidence? And the debunkers are likely cringing right now, which is sort of my specialty, as the Rishat structure is one of their favorite sites to shoot on, even though it is one of the least studied places on Earth. As it is in a very remote area, you know, red zone, super dangerous, overrun by rogue military forces type sh but follow-up LIDAR scans of the area did have some interesting finds. Thousands of what appear to be ancient man-made structures found beneath the sands of the Eye of the Sahara. Definitely not something we could call natural. Not necessarily proving Atlantis, but showing that an unrecorded civilization existed in this extremely remote desert sometime in the past. But further in-depth excavation of the region is conveniently too risky to pursue. And any career archaeologist found supporting Atlantis will get mocked and discredited in their communities, so they just try to avoid it. But where did this idea of a lost advanced civilization that sank beneath the 
notion even come from? The earliest formal account is by famed Greek philosopher Plato around 360 BC in one of his many dialogues about a perfect utopian society called Atlantis, which was governed by Atlas. You know, that guy who holds the world on his shoulders? Atlantis roughly translates to Island of Atlas. In Plato's writing Critias, an ancestor of his named Solon visited Egypt way back in 600 BC, where he's told by Egyptian priests of this great advanced civilization that was destroyed by a flood 9,000 years ago, whose story has been passed down for generations and is recorded all over the temples in Egypt. Now, 9,000 years ago from that time would be around 9,600 BC, conveniently aligned with the Younger Dryas Impact, a hypothesized event that resulted in global cataclysms that flooded the world that is scientifically backed by geological core samples. And Atlantis was around for much longer than that. 9,600 BC is just when it got wiped out. It's here where Plato described how it looked with great detail, which many claim is just a myth, a, a work of fiction that he wrote. And Plato did write many dialogues of presumably fictitious events, such as the allegory of the caves or conversations among friends in the Republic. But he would make it quite obvious in his texts when these fictitious dialogues were just stories that discussed hypothetical, philosophical, or moralistic ideas. In his dialogue Critias, he describes Atlantis in great length, providing super accurate details and dates that had little connection to his overall message of the story. And the strangest part of Critias is that it just ends in the middle of a sentence. Yeah, he didn't even finish the story as it just comes to an abrupt end as soon as Zeus is about to give an epic speech. Was there someone who told him to stop writing? Did he actually finish it and it was later erased from history? Or was it just fiction that he got bored of and he moved on to other writings? We can honestly never know for sure, but this isn't the last time Atlantis is mentioned in history. But these stories, right? They're just made up myths. Where is the evidence? We'll get to that, because the Temple of Edfu in Egypt has carved into its walls a story about a lost civilization that got flooded and destroyed by a great cataclysm. Sounding like a broken record at this point. And Egypt has a recorded lineage of kings that goes back over 30,000 years, but is commonly regarded as just a myth. According to these Egyptian myths, in these earliest of times was a god named Thoth, who was born around 36,000 years ago in an idyllic civilization, where he accumulated great knowledge about the world, the universe, astronomy, writing, government, and even how to achieve immortality, and recorded them on giant slabs of green stones known as the Emerald Tablets. Everything was all fine and dandy until that pesky flood rolls along and destroys everything around 11,000 years ago, 9600 BC. Thoth survives the deluge and is instructed, among a few others, to pass the divine knowledge of the Emerald Tablets on to the next generation. One of the places he visits was a region called Kem, which we know today as Egypt, where he reintroduces civilization to a land of savages. He taught the early early pre-Egyptians how to write with hieroglyphics, along with astronomy, agriculture, governing, and all the basics of civilization, and allegedly introduced them to the pyramids, which were leftover relics from Thoth's original civilization that got destroyed by the global floods. A similar version of this story is also retold in the Phaedrus, another written work by Plato. Some claim that Thoth was actually Atlantean, and that these mega structures around the world, like the pyramids, Easter Island Heads, Kailash Temple, Gunung Padang, Saske Huaman, and so on, are all relics of the Atlantean Empire. Because according to this, Atlantis wasn't just a city or an island, it was a global civilization that existed over 30,000 years ago, and we might just have the evidence for it. Listening to this, I actually like the idea that Toth came from Atlantis. That kind of makes sense if we're going to go that route. And what if the emerald tablets were not actually emerald tablets? What if they were just computer chips? You know how a circuitry board is green? and it looks like it's got a bunch of little words on it. What if when Atlantis did go through the Great Flood, Toth did survive, and he shared his information and people just understood those computer chips as emerald tablets? I kinda like that theory, that's a really cool one. That's why when you see the hieroglyphs of Toth, it looks like he's using modern day technology because he actually had some form of modern day technology but when they talk about the emerald tablets it's not actual emerald tablets it's just computer chips let me know in the comments of what you think about this theory i might be reaching a little too far but i it kind of makes sense to me oh yeah he just moved <gasps> right we're not doing this to harm him just to see if he snaps oh yeah no he's alive oh, oh, god. Oh, oh, my god. <laughs> that is a terrifying looking fish i'm not sure what type of fish that is Leave a comment if you know what it is, but it looks like a thing made of nightmares.
I know I have a lot of trees out there that have those knots on them. I kind of want to go bust a couple of them down and see if any tree pearls comes out because that's what they're calling them on this video description, tree pearls. Have any of you known about tree pearls? I never realized that those were removable pieces of tree like that. I bet there's going to be some people that are going to make some really cool jewelry, different types of pieces with this. This is a new one to me for sure. Let me know if this is a new one to you or if this is something you're very well experienced with because I've never heard of this before. Under our floorboards, a black box completely covered in wax. The edges are sealed, and something stuck in the lid. Don't hate me, but I needed to know what was inside. There was a keyhole underneath. It could be a match for the key we found. It fits, but the hole is full of wax. I had to melt it. It still wouldn't turn, so I had to upgrade the tools and break it open. The realtors definitely didn't mention this in the advert. We're a bit concerned about who used to live here. Apparently, the writing marked on the lid translates to don't let her speak. I do not know if this is a real video or not, or if this is just something that people actually did find in their attic, but I'm not going to lie, if I found a box like that covered in wax, I would also want to open it. But if I seen that there was like a Ouija board in there or something, that would, that would kind of freak me out a little bit. How about any of you? Would any of you open the box? Would you take it out of your home, burn it, throw it away? What would you do in this situation? That would be a no thank you for me. We have some interesting footage coming out of San Diego, California, captured on the night of July 25th, 2024. This family records what looks like an unidentified object crashing to earth and potentially on fire. Now, the woman thinks that it's a meteor. The man says, no, it's a UFO. I'm going to play devil's advocate. When you zoom in, it's an object that's flipping over and over, and it is on fire. I don't believe that this is a meteor. I actually believe this may be a UFO crash landing to Earth. Now, the question is, where did this land? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. It is a meteor. It's a fucking UFO. No, that's a meteor. It's on fire. Oh, you have that's to bring out. A lot of people in the comments are saying it could be a falling satellite and it does look rectangular it does look like it is spinning as well but i really don't know what it could be leave a comment if you have any ideas or if you even know what it is and hopefully it's not a plane going down and that's just a bunch of people burning up written in the hardest language on earth this book has been impossible to decipher for over 600 years written in voynichese the voynich manuscript is a 240 page medieval codex from the 15th century. It was acquired in 1912 by a rare book dealer named Wilfred Voynich. Since no one has ever been able to decipher what it says, it is believed to be some ancient magical grimoire or scientific book. The pages within the manuscript include unidentified plants, astrological charts, zodiac symbols, and the images of women, many of whom seem to be pregnant, bathing in odd scenarios involving unusual contraptions and green liquid. Its contents are so otherworldly that some believe it's just an elaborate hoax. The first known owner of the Voynich manuscript was Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II. It's said he paid about $90,000 in today's money for the book. Some say it was created by someone trying to exploit Rudolf's interest in alchemy and the occult. Another theory is that Wilfred Voynich fabricated the manuscript and created a legend about it being written by the famous Roger Bacon 
to increase its value. The Voynich manuscript mystery continues to this day. Attempts to decipher it have not yielded many results, and even expert cryptologists haven't been able to extract anything of value. William Friedman concluded that it didn't contain an unknown code, but was written in an unintelligible constructed language. It really would not surprise me back in the day if people were trying to pull one over on royalty because they wanted to make extra cash. And things like this makes me believe that people were doing that back in the day. This was just something to tickle the king's fancy and they knew that they could get him with this. That's at least what I think. Yo, can somebody explain to me what the hell is that? Where is it? What is that, yo? That thing is not moving. That looks like a flying saucer. What is that? That thing is just not moving at all in the, in the sky. Come closer, come closer, you alien. Honestly, I have no clue what that could be. It does kind of look like a flying saucer, but truly, I have no clue. It is staying still, but it is drifting just a little bit, it looks like. I don't know if maybe that's just the camera angle that's hitting it. I really don't know. Let me know what you guys think it is. This is everything that's happened in the UK today, but in 60 seconds. This whole situation is just absolutely shocking. After an 11-year-old girl has been left orphaned after her entire family were killed in a car crash. The accident happened on Sunday and I cannot imagine what the rest of the family is feeling and that poor, poor young girl. You're probably pretty terrified of the Great White Shark and I have some brilliant news for you. As apparently, Great White Sharks could be coming to England soon due to climate change. Absolutely not. Mentra is now at an all-time high in the UK, more positive news I know. With over 487,000 people living with it in June. Like what? People are going crazy over what's happening in the US as Joe Biden hasn't been seen for like four days since he stepped down and he's not said a word. And apparently the flags today were flying at half mast, which is what they do when someone passes away. I'm gonna look into it more, but apparently it's because the representative Sheila Jackson passed away, so that's why this has happened, but yeah. Smoking and vaping is about to be officially banned in England now, finally though. Now please let me know if this is a good or a bad thing. Vaping, they are saying they want to slowly phase out, so they're going to get rid of the colourful packaging and get rid of the nice flavours completely. And smoking, they're going to raise the legal age limit every single year, so a 15-year-old today will never be able to buy them. Be sure you share this video with a friend and hit that follow button, I'll keep you updated. There's a documentary that you guys need to watch. It's called The Grab Documentary. This investigative journalist finds out that the new war is food and water. China does not have enough water to grow food for their own country. So that's why they're going to Africa and to the U.S. and buying up farmland to send it back to feed their own country. It basically just shows how vulnerable our world is, but also how America is just like letting in all yes. these different countries, China, Saudi Arabia. What they're doing is depleting our resources. It's insane. But he's basically talking about how Russia right now is like like melting away mm. so it's producing this like, rich grassland and wow. it talked about how Putin is heavily investing in cattle right now and actually hiring US cattlemen to come live in Russia continue growing the cattle farms really it's showing how all these different countries are just trying to grow their yeah. infrastructure of food and water also Ukraine is like one of the best spots in Eastern Europe for growing food they said that Ukraine produces 23% of the world's grain that was probably a reason that Russia is trying to take over Ukraine it's like gaining more control of food this USB cable was stuck inside a British teenager's urethra. Allow me to explain. One day in 2021, a teen is brought to a hospital in London. His parents brought him there because he was peeing blood. He asked the doctors to see him without his parents. And when his parents are gone, he tells them he stuck a USB cable up there. Why would he do this? According to the teen, he put it up there because he wanted to measure it. Which is like the most ridiculous lie you could possibly come up with. Like, what's what's the plan? Are you gonna get it in there, mark it with a magic marker, pull it out, and then measure the thing? That's the most ass backwards way to do it. You, know, you gotta get the classic, the ruler technique. Maybe you wanna be a little accurate tape measure. We all know you're trying to do some kids in the sandbox style fun. In any case, he got it in, but he couldn't get it out. And he thought he would be able to hide it from his parents, but then he started peeing blood. They take him to the emergency room, he gets an x-ray, and they find that there's a big knot in there. So here's how they removed it. They cut a big hole in his taint, 
the actual muscle is called the bulba spongiosis. Then they cut them open, they pull out one end, cut the cord, and then they yank the other side out the way it came in. Believe it or not, he actually had a full recovery with no complications. Although doctors advise that this ordeal puts him at a higher risk for eventually developing a narrow urethra. That is just messed up. Why, why would that kid do that? What, what was the ultimate purpose? And I'm assuming it wasn't the full-sized USB end. Like, how, how did they even fit it in there in the first place? That, there's so many questions to this, and I guess it's better just left unanswered. Check this out, you guys. Japan created a human washing machine. Yes, a machine that washes humans. Humans. This idea surfaced 50 years ago at the Osaka Expo. Now, could it be coming to a shower room near you? Let's take a look. A model of a human washing machine is on display at a company showroom in Osaka City. The company chairman, Aoyama Yasuaki, says the model is inspired by a device he saw at the Osaka Expo when he was a child. It will wash you completely clean from your head to your toes. The model is based on a technology that creates extremely small water bubbles and doesn't use soap. The company says its human washing machine can clean and dry the whole body in 50 minutes. No soap, though. Ideas are in the works to upgrade the device. I personally do not see the need for one for myself because I have an able body, but for people that are elderly or not capable of moving, this would be excellent for them. And I do kind of hope that this technology does get funded because this would be excellent for people in nursing homes, hospitals, places like that. Not necessarily for in-home use, unless again you are crippled somehow, or elderly. Honestly, I see nothing wrong with this. But I am curious as to why no soap. I wonder if that just ruins it, or maybe it's a, they're afraid of it clogging or something. If any of you have any idea, leave a comment on that one, because I really wouldn't know why they wouldn't want me to use soap. Have y'all had your phone up to your ear like this today? Or even right now, you could have it right up in your face. This is extremely dangerous, and I'm about to show you why. Many right now aren't taking it seriously, but you will when I'm done. Lately, I've been seeing tons of videos of young people getting brain tumors and having the big C word. So watch this, then we'll talk. Measuring, so we're at 0 0.2, 0 0.6. It jumped up because it's actually picking up signal. Now watch it when it comes closer. 28, 33, 29, 39, as opposed to the distance you would be on speakerphone. 0 0.1, 0 0.4. It'll even go down below that. Even now, you're trying to talk yourself into thinking that's just a little bit. Well, check this out. After 15 minutes of phone usage, look at this dude's head, but specifically look right here at the forehead. You're about to see why I said that. That is your frontal lobe. This is only 95 to 2014, so you can't even imagine what it is now, but look at this red line. What is that huge red line? Frontal lobe tumors. Like this. Again, with cell phone, frontal lobe, without cell phone. How bad the microwave waves affect our brain. I'm telling you it's worth it to keep a safe distance from your phone all the time, watching, on the phone, and even to turn off your Wi-Fi when you're going to bed, because this is the survival rate of 100 people over 5 years, and just about all of them are gone within 5 years. 18 to 40, the gray line right here, you might have another year or two. So basically, when you get this, you're looking at 5 years left. And here's another chart showing the frontal lobe tumors and the big C word exploding over the last couple decades. And again, this is 2014, 2015. You can't even imagine if it was 2024 where every child and human and everyone has a phone. Not including the new technologies that came out either. We need to spread awareness because I'm telling you guys, this is not worth it. For the last few years now, I've always had my phone on speakerphone away from my face because when it's on my face, I start feeling really, really, really zoned out. Now, I never feel zoned out when I have my phone up against my face. But it does get incredibly hot, and I know that that cannot be good for you just in case the battery explodes. And I'm sure that it is impulsing like some kind of radio wave at your face. I mean, the studies do definitely show that there's a difference. And I do not keep them in my pockets either. I always keep it on the backside in a phone clip. I mean, right now where it stands, we're putting technology literally on our face. So who knows what that's going to do, because I'm sure it's doing the same thing. It's actually really scary to think about. Who knows, maybe in another 50 years, people will look back at the technology that we used and they'll be like, wow, 
those guys were savages. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you enjoyed any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And before I go, I want to say thank you for stopping by my live Saturday. That was really helpful. I really appreciate your time. It was really fun to sit down and just chat with everyone, go over some videos and and react to them live. It's it's really fun and I think I have a setup now where I can actually start doing live streams more often. And by more often, I'm talking about maybe Fridays and or Sundays, every other Sunday. But we'll see, it's still in development on that one. So if you're interested in watching lives, if you're interested in watching any of these videos and you're new to the channel, go ahead and like and subscribe. I really appreciate everyone that's watching, everyone that's subscribed. And with that being said, have a good day.